Take it. And let it go. Which is a jack. Sir, I'll be more than glad to push this thing. Thank you All very right. much. There you go. Butch showing his cards here is a classic rookie blunder. I'm glad he did, though, because now I know for sure my ace 10 was dominated by his ace jack. Trust me, I know how tempting it is to play dominated hands like aces with medium kickers, or even hands like king jack, queen jack, or king nine. These hands are very seductive when you've been dealt 10 junk hands in a row and you're dying to get into a pot and play some poker. Don't be seduced. Sit on your palms if you have to. You see, the trouble with dominated hands is that when you win with them, you usually win only a small pot. But when you lose with them, you often get clobbered because top pair is so hard to get away from. That's why dominated hands are called trap hands. They trap you into losing a lot of chips. I really want you to avoid making the mistake that cost me a bundle when I was learning this game. I really want you to avoid domination. Hal, if you think your hand could be dominated, fold before the flop. Most of you already have an idea of what cards to play in different positions and table conditions, so I'm not going to go into detail here. For those who want to review, I've included an insert in your DVD package that can be used as a guide. Overall, it's important to remember that starting hand guides are just that, guides. Poker is a game of situations and cannot be played by the book. Lines are still three and six with a thousand dollar ante. Button now sits in front of Butch. Harmony with the big blind. KW first act. It's up to KW, he passes. It's up to Bruce, who also passes. Chris Ferguson. Chris is a short stack here. Looks like he's going to play. Chris bets 20,000. Hmm. Chris can't really afford to risk chips right now. His small raise makes me think he wants someone to call. How much you got? Put his ass for a count here. There's 74,000 there, sir. 74,000 is what Chris has remaining. Raise. Butch's re-raise is enough to put Chris all in. If Chris was fishing for a call and holds a strong hand, Butch's re-raise is a dream come true. Now to Phil Gordon. All right, this hand looks pretty good, doesn't it? It's actually a very easy fold. When I consider Chris's small raise and Butch's re-raise, I gotta believe this pocket pair is no good. Here's an extremely important principle for you to understand. You need a better hand to call a raise with than you do to make a raise with. I'm gonna repeat that again. You need a better hand to call a raise with than you do to make a raise with. Take this hand for example. If I were first to the pot, I'd raise with this pair of nines but I wouldn't call a raise with them. Definitely not a re-raise. In fact, I wouldn't call Butch's re-raise without aces, kings, queens, or ace-king. This theory was introduced by David Skolansky and is called the gap concept. Very, very important. When it comes to playing small and medium pocket pairs, many players make the mistake of ignoring the gap concept. They fall in love with their pocket pair and they aren't able to do the right thing. Phil lets it go. Now to Harmony. Raise. He's going to raise the pot here. Wow, a big raise from Harmony. Based on the gap concept, she's got to have a powerhouse hand to make this raise. Chris Ferguson has moved all in. This got serious. <laughs> <laughs> Action now back to Butch. 101,000 for him to call. All right, we got no a show call. here, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to see these hands match up the odd stacks here. Let's see what we got. We got Chris. Right. <laughs> Chris Ferguson has two oh. kings. Oh, man. Oh. Ace king for Harmony. 
I am so glad I got rid of my nines. I'd be in a world of hurt right now. Just a little ace. Flop is queen, 10-4. King's in the lead for Chris Ferguson. Two cards left. Harmony can now make a straight with the jack. A four on the turn. Can still make that straight with the jack, or she could win with an ace. I'm rooting for an ace. I want her to bust Chris. Nothing personally, he's a good friend of mine, but I want him out of this tournament. Nice deal. Ah. Last card is nice Chris nice. Ferguson. Nice. Triples up. You can't fault Harmony here. She got her ace-king heads up against Chris, thinking that at worst she was going to be a coin flip away from eliminating the best player at the table. I'm so glad I folded my nines, even though they looked pretty good at first sight. Don't fall in love with those good-looking medium pocket pairs. Follow the gap concept, and you'll save yourself a lot of heartache. Well, here's the chip count. Chris Ferguson has just doubled up. That is not good. Look at Butch's stack. He's got almost a third of the chips in play. I'm going to need to get some of those chips for sure. Buttons with Mr. Gordon. Oh, I'm Mr. Gordon now. About time I got some respect. <laughs> okay, I'm on the button. That means that I'm going to be last to act after the flop. Being last to act or having good position is a major advantage in No Limit Texas Hold'em. Here are some of the advantages of having good position. I get to see how my opponents act before it's my turn to act. I have the last opportunity to bluff, and I can extract more money from my opponents when they have a good hand, but I have a better hand. When I'm in position, I go out of my way to play. When I'm out of position, I rarely play. Position, position, position. This is absolutely critical to your success in No Limit Hold'em. Says first, and he puts in twenty thousand. Short stack. Chris Ferguson lays it down. Called by Butch. The two most aggressive players have entered the pot, but neither of them have committed a lot of chips. Nice, another pocket pair. This time, I'm going to play them. Do you see why this situation is different from the last hand when I folded my pair of nines? It's different because, this time, the raise is from a very aggressive player who will raise with just about anything. Bruce might not have a good hand. Also, no one has re-raised. And, most importantly, I'm in position. I'm going to be last to act on every round of betting. In the previous hand, I would have been first to act. Position makes a huge difference in what starting hands I'll play. Normally, I'd re-raise here with a pocket pair. I think it's the best hand. But in this case, I'm just going to call. I don't want to spoil my chances of flopping a set in position. Fill off the calls. Harmony lets it go. Back to KW in the big blind. He calls. Four players in this pot before the flop. All right, we're going to get four-way action here. First three cards. Six. Our jack, ten, five, with two spades. Ah, well, I didn't hit my six. This flop is very dangerous, too. There are two over cards, a straight, and a flush draw. Yep, definitely getting a hair replacement. KW checks. Bruce checks it. Butch checks now to fill. Wow, everyone checked to me? That seems a little bit sneaky, doesn't it? Normally, I'd bet here, taking advantage of my position and my right to bluff last. But right now, I'm thinking, when these two maniacs check into a dangerous flop, one of them must be up to no good. So, I'm just going to check and take the free card. I'm hoping to make my set on the turn. And he checks. Turn card is an eight. Let's make it 50,000. KW makes it 50,000. KW definitely has a hand. Considering there's still three players left to act, and he's that low on chips, KW is not messing around. 